the husband, the Labor Day special, got an anonymous message email yesterday that turned out to be from her husband. Do you know where your husband was yesterday when he was supposed to be in Laurel? He was in East City cheating on you with a married co-worker so, after investigation, that did reveal that he was indeed many miles from where he'd said he'd gone. Hacking into his email and seeing an email from her appear saying my husband knows and he's going to buy an ex I confronted my husband. He's all, we are just friends, and I went to help her pick out a baby gift for a baby shower, and I knew how you'd react so I said I was going to see my other friend. And he's all, nothing happened, she's my friend from work, they are elementary teachers. I continued to get texts from her husband giving me details of the story she told him, that they had a fair in his car said it and had been meeting up with each other after school, staying late doing work. Even with the information from the husband, my husband is still saying nothing happened. I so want to make this work. We already had our first counseling appointment scheduled before even found out about this. We have a five-year-old daughter, been married ten years, and I still love him, fool me. But I can't see it working if he doesn't confess the whole thing and stop being like I knew you'd react like this, so that's why I lied about where I was. We were just talking bull crap. We are currently living apart with a shared custody agreement for now, and I really hope that the shame, and I know that's what's keeping him from even admitting to himself the disgusting thing he did, because he would be the last person I think would cross that line, does not keep him from being able to work on his denial and minimizing, so we can get down to moving forward and working on the issues that were already there. What do I do? I am heartbroken. I haven't eaten in a day and a half, I keep throwing up, my eyes are swollen shut. I know we're both too raw right now to even be talking in our right minds. He can't even talk on the phone with me but it sounds like someone is sitting on his chest and he has no air. Well, me too buddy. I'm figuring a three to six month separation at least, while we go to intensive therapy and try to see what's what and if we can work through this. I know we can if he continues this crap, but I hope the male counselor I booked can have some influence on him. He is the best father in the world but has proven a lousy husband recently. He has been deeply depressed for about a year, and I know he has acted in ways he might not have, even given our marital problems which we have been actively working on for a while. He was just working on them with the wrong person. In the stages of grief and loss, I am going between depression and anger. When will I not feel like a ping pong? It's only been a day since I found out. We were not separated before. I asked him to pack it up today as I wanted to vomit every time. I look at him. But he's half the time fully repentant that he lied, but not about the friend he made and half the time more on the offensive about how I don't understand him. Her husband found out because their car has GPS tracking and he wondered why the heck she was so far from home they both were, and he confronted her about it because he had noticed she'd been making lame excuses to stay late at work and shutting down internet pages when he walked by, just like mine. He told me she confessed and that it seems most of the time they spent together was more a blurring of the boundaries type thing, still wrong, and that this said it crossed the final line. He has no proof, other than that both of them were in that parking lot for two hours alone together, and of course what she said. My husband almost always had had only girlfriends. Not many guy friends. He's been that way since high school. Life of the party, likes to be liked, etc. He is insisting it's just like any of those friends. But I asked him when was the last time he lied to me to go meet up with one of his friends I knew. When was the last time he sat with one of them in a parking lot just talking because it feels good to be around her and she understands him. It was different, but he won't admit it and all those other friends he has text threads, all very innocent. With her, nothing, which was noteworthy in itself. Her husband says it was all through private Facebook messages. And I did get into his email account while investigating yesterday, and happened to be on when her email popped up about her husband knowing. His story is total bull, but I think he's shocked even himself with this behavior. Like I said, even with all our problems, he is full-on family man, God-fearing church leader, and is probably appalled at his own behavior. I honestly think he's convinced himself it didn't really happen and if he says it enough, he'll believe it. I know him. That's what's going on. So, I do have hope that the counseling process might help. I think he'll be receptive to it. We were in before for a short time, but it wasn't a good match and we stopped. Then, he began to slide into a deep depression, with very few symptoms other than losing his smile and being quieter. Life went on as usual, although I kept mentioning this to him. I struggle with depression on and off myself, we are like a powder keg, for real. My mother-in-law also lives with us, and guess who got stuck with her as well as the five-year-old? And her and I do not get along. She still does not believe he even lied at all, much less did anything but be a good friend to that poor woman who needed a friend. But he and I are planning on doing weekly swaps of the house for the time being, so my daughter doesn't have to go anywhere. We are the ones to swap out, not her. That is obvious temporary. Her husband doesn't know what he's doing yet either. He said it's not looking good. They have a 13-year-old son. They were all at my house for a Christmas party last week. Oh, I didn't mention that. Yeah, her husband was worried about STD but I told him not to worry, we have trouble getting pregnant, and I was just inseminated two weeks ago, so, yeah, all recently tested. I can get a polygraph on him. Where? How? I have already done the anything else to add thing. 
I even sent him excerpts of the email messages the husband sent me. See the detail. I know religion is no cover-up. Everyone, religious or not, is only human. But I know him, and he doesn't see it that way. He has to be above reproach for him to get validation for himself as a Christian, and I've seen it over and over, like he's split in two, which is why I think he's really has convinced himself he didn't do anything. It simply wasn't him. Now, don't go thinking he's a psycho. Did I mention I'm a mental health clinical? Yeah, we're a hot mess over here. But anyway, we have both been sliding farther and farther away from each other for a long time, making attempts to make it better but falling short. It's a whole convoluted horror story is what it is, but at the end, I know I just have to pray hard, hope he can come clean, hope I can make the right choices and if I choose to stay to really forgive him and myself. I know it's not my fault, but I have been a seriously mean witch, hence, the prior couples and individual counseling for me. Four, oh, maybe 85% of our marriage, but in the last year really thought I was making some changes, headway, and we were trying to build better connections. We actually were, I think. But, well, he's obviously got his own stuff as well as our stuff going on. Point is, we got the good, the bad, and the ugly over here. And there will be worse and ugly than good for my daughter, whom for religious, moral, and loving parent reasons, I never wanted to grow up in two different homes. He has said he would take a polygraph. He said he'd take any test I want him to take. He did not touch that woman, insert male voice here. They were just 45 minutes away from both their homes, considering whether to buy a bottle warmer or baby blanket for this fictitious baby shower. That's all. Sorry darn sarcasm comes out every time. Now, anyone getting a feel for what it might be like to cross me? Yeah, I'm not very easy on him, even when it's just forgetting something small. So, yeah, there were problems. But I told him his decisions as a result of those problems are all him to take responsibility for. I also told him that, let's just say he did not actually sleep with her, that her husband is feeding me all this because he's a jealous, proprietary Latino man, by all accounts, and my meeting him. True, well he got us good. But the person who opened the door to this road was my husband, I told him. That he opened that door with the lies and deception to go shopping and talk, and he let this crud, I did not say crud, into our door. And you know what? Maybe someone else is shoveling crud in because they saw an open door. But guess what? I can't tell the freaking difference between my husband's crud and the stuff someone else might be shoveling in to be vengeful, and it's his fault because he opened the door. I didn't mean to say I thought he didn't sleep with her. His story is so stupid. My only concern is that we don't have much of a chance to move on if he continues to deny. For stopping the argument's sake, I speculated for a moment that let's just say he did not, and this jealous Latino husband was trying to get revenge and making things up, it's my husband's fault all the same. It's not on me to try to determine what's true or not at this point. That's his worry. He opened the crud door and can't cry now that someone else is supposedly using it to shovel lies to me. Of course, I will check into that polygraph. I don't think being in denial would involve me tossing his butt out while we possibly try to reconcile and go through counseling. I'm assuming it will be no less than four months, maybe upwards of a year. My only wavering comes in the hard work it will take, whether it will be worth it, and whether he'll be capable of manning up. Cause I might as well just save myself the headache if he's not capable of getting on the bandwagon. This parking lot, in front of a Walmart, in a large city, on Seri. Believe you me, I have been wondering how they accomplished such a feat, with no tinted windows. He ultimately said that they never actually went in to buy the gift. That he bought her a cup of coffee from one of those outside vendor trucks in front of the store, and they talked. She was giving him advice and suggestions on how to work out the marriage problems. OMG, really. EOWH said the car never moved from the Walmart parking lot, but they did it in his truck, so I guess they could have gone around back or somewhere else. Whatever. Latest news, he still looks in shock. Crying, saying he was so stupid, voice raw, and still denying anything physical happened. Agreed to polygraph. He wrote everything out, and it sounds sincere, but of course there is always going to be a huge doubt that the OWH is telling the truth more likely than my husband. Now I have tried to get more information from OWH like could he give me her cell number so I can check his phone records, details about not only that it happened, but what were they doing before, after, what was said. He's now silent. No response. I found her number on my own and called it. It's been disconnected. I contacted her through work email which I guess she'll get tomorrow, pleading with her to tell me her version. The phone records indicate about five one to two minute phone calls over the last two months. That does go along with his timeline about when he started asking her advice about what he should do to better things at home. It does disturb me that the whole list of things the OWH sent me about their entire relationship truly was a yawner, ran down the street the store from where they worked to buy a Santa hat for the students' winter show, went to group happy hour for holiday party, and that's about it, except the last line saying, and they had slept together in his truck. Again, trying to get some more information from him, but now he is not responding. To be honest, just simply knowing he lied to me to go meet her was obviously at least the beginnings of a slippery slide off the just friends slope and we would be separated now just for that anyway. So, it wouldn't change my current situation. 
but my future depends on knowing whether he's still lying to cover his butt, or really coming clean and being sincere after this debacle. I think we can at least try to work it out through counseling if he's capable of being transparent. He came over today, I didn't tell him why, just asked him to come, and he handed his phone over when I demanded it first thing. I didn't talk to him at all for a long time while I checked his phone contacts with the phone log, text, and got into his Facebook account to root around. He had already deleted the messages from her. I told him that was a really stupid move because it just points even further into the not just friends direction. We are already firmly in that camp. We told our five-year-old today that mommy and daddy are taking a time out because we hurt each other feelings. And he told me he would be willing to go to his administrator to explain privately what has happened and to try to get her agreement to keep a log of his departures, activities, and contact with this woman. She probably would do it. Not sure if this is a good move. Only time will tell. Like I said, just the meeting itself was a betrayal, and show major problems we really have been trying to work out, but now know we can only go forward 200% very seriously to work on. We are going to stay separated. I told him we both need some emotional distance and time, to see that life as we knew it could be over in a new life, single, sharing custody, would be possible. Right now, both are so unimaginable for us that maybe we want each other just so we don't have to be alone and share our daughter. I don't know. I want him to choose me. I want me to choose him. As we are now, and not be stuck in the past versions of us, which we have both changed for the better and worse over the last 10 years. Maybe we need to know who we are, only then can we choose each other. So, either way, separation stands. Yeah, more hot, jealous, Latino OWH might have been so pissed someone dared even think of his wife, who knows. I'm usually very logical and level-headed. It's been one of my husband's complaints. Oh, just got message from OWH. Gave me her cell, but said they never used it to communicate. It was always on Facebook. And she deleted the messages, so he couldn't show them to me. In his message, he said he got her to confess to everything in writing and that he's using it to get full custody of their child in the divorce. I am going to be asking him for a copy of that, and I hope he will give it to me. He also said my husband told her he does not love me and that I am cold and don't like to bond, which has been a huge issue between us for a long time. It sounds like him. So, back to square one. I confronted him with this new information. He's still sticking to his guns. Admits he told her something like that but not in those words about me, but not literally. Whatever that means, I am. So, devastated. And tired of this emotional roller coaster. At some point, I'm going to have to stop digging for the truth and either choose to forgive him and work towards a better life or choose to cut ties. So, I just played the empathy card with him as a last-ditch effort to try to get him to confess. I know he's not a bad person, it could happen to anyone in a moment of crisis, God forgives all, etc. all of which I do believe. We are all only human, and yes, I am a very religious person. I told him that he opened the door to allow the devil into our home, and if the devil then decided to make more lies not even my husband's, well who let him in the door? Continued lies are only the devil's work, when we need God here instead. We have an appointment with our pastor later this week. I think, if nothing else, that will get him to fest to stuff he hasn't already. If not, nothing will. Or what he's saying is true, doubtful, but, whatever. About the bonding. It has been an issue. I do have a problem with intimacy. It's something he's always complained about. But in the last year, we've been at least four times a month. Sometimes up to seven. Yes, I track it. OCD anyone. I have tried to be more demonstrative, but it's not in my nature to do so. But I've tried. It has never been enough for him. For a time, about six or seven years ago, he was also obsessed with porn. Was totally in denial about that as well. But it stopped. But, yeah, affection, not just bonding, has been difficult between us. But better for a while. So, it sort of rings true what this man is saying he heard from the O. It would be something my husband complained about. Well, bud, hope you weren't planning on that improving after this cluster. Sorry anger and rage coming out again. I need to channel calm and logic. Yeah right, I have also been super emotionally reactive. Not abusive, but probably darn near close. Very critical, afraid to give up control, childhood abuse issues, blah blah, overly angry at even little things, struggling on and off with depression. I know my symptoms, so I seek help whenever it gets bad, and I have actively been changing and trying to be different. We previously went to therapy together and me individually. So, yeah, all issues. His repression and denial do not help. I'm more of a logical, categorize the problem and attack it, which is sometimes too aggressive for him. And when he doesn't jump on the your wife knows best train, I get angry at him. Anyway, after my little talk with him, he thanked me for saying all that, about everyone being human and having weak moments, and said he would write me an email with all the details of all the conversations, themes of discussions with her, and anything else he has left out. We'll see but be sure I will talk everyone's ears off when I hear. He had only been with one person before me, but he is the only man I've ever had an orgasm with and I've told him that. I know this is a problem, which of course is intertwined with a whole bunch of other problems both between us and with me individually. So, yes, I do recognize it. 
and it has been getting better. The problem is that I am a person who will lay it all out there, talk, 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 try to make a plan of action, and he is shut down, doesn't talk about things. So, while I thought we were making headway, and was still actively trying, he was shutting me out more and more and welcoming Owen instead. Did I forget to mention that we are from different countries too? Our native languages are different. His is Spanish, mine English. We almost always communicate in Spanish because English is still difficult for him. So, from the beginning, we've not only had the man-woman thing going on, but a whole host of cultural differences when it came to communication. And now, having my mother-in-law living with us, oops, did I mention that? I can see the huge cultural difference again. He has assimilated a lot, but there are still those differences. But we've always had to deal with all that. Actually, that's one of the things with the lying, which he does all the time. What I call a lie, he calls something different. His mother does this too. She can never give a straight answer. It's like it's discourteous to give a straight answer. There's hemming and hawing and changing minor details that make you look a little better, a little bit more prestigious, more status, more about the facade that has been a problem with him always. But always over stupid stuff, like when asked on some sort of application what his salary is, he'll add a few digits, or if he thinks I'll make a big deal out of something, did I mention my reactivity? He'll change the story to what he thinks will be less trouble he has to go through. He does it automatically, for his convenience. Not to say Latinos do this, but his mother does the same thing. It drives me crazy. Communication has been an issue on so many levels. I am way more concrete and literal, and more American straightforward and blunt. Bluntness and sarcasm are not well received in that culture, and especially that I'm communicating in my second language has made it more difficult to fine-tune or be more tactful in my communications has actually probably made my directness even more pronounced. I called him out on his lies today, when I asked whether the messages from her on Facebook were still there. His response I'm not sure how long they remain in the box, asked again, his response they might be gone, not sure, called him on his BS, then yes, I deleted them, I told him he has a major problem, one I've addressed before and he's brushed off as me being a hysterical over controlling, something, he finally acknowledged he does it, and it is automatic, he agreed to individual counseling, he said he will try, but since it's been so ingrained, he might make errors on impulse, and that if he pauses before answering me to think before he answers anything I ask, I'll think he's making something up. And, oh yeah, I had some choice words for mother-in-law yesterday, and today. I told her if she proves to be a venomous presence in this house, she can kiss our shelter and support goodbye. I told her I can't have her whispering in his ear about how unreasonable his wife is not to believe him, that he's just a dear, good friend, and why won't I understand that? She tells me, but he's never lied. He doesn't lie. Even after all the evidence, she still says it. I told her to her face the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. My husband met with me today in our home. He had a conversation with his mother about the lies he told me about this situation and to set up a meeting with that woman and asked her not to make comments to me about that. This has typically been his role between me and her. He really is like two different men. One reasonable, educated, calm and empathetic, actually why so many consider him such a good friend. When I'm flying off the handle with kid stuff and other stress, he's talking reasonably with our daughter, quietly fixing things. If only humanity could be black or white, good or evil. But no one, well, Jeffrey Dahmer, maybe, no one is all evil or all good. Still waiting to hear back from him. Thing is, we don't have a mine and yours pile of money. Everything is ours, as our family finances are so super tight, that we each only get enough at the end of the paycheck to pay for gas, and maybe a cup of coffee. So, I'll be paying, or we'll be paying. This takes money from me and my daughter as well. I am not going to get ugly until I have some protections in place first. I have opened another bank account and moved money, hidden my daughter's passport. This requires some planning. I actually believe he's repentant to a point. His internal struggle right now is a spiritual one, a strong one. He is a well-respected, well-liked, well-thought-of leader in the church, one of the best teachers in his school, and his struggle is that he wants his family. But right now, he wants to save face more. He can't even admit to himself he did this. I honestly believe that. He has been severely depressed for about a year now, admitting he's felt farther and farther isolated, away from God, away from his family, and he found someone who made him feel something, false, and ran with it. She started working there just recently. I really pity him, but I pity me and my daughter more. I have no idea what time will tell. We were scheduled to start marriage counseling next week anyway, and I told him I'd go once to explain everything but that he then had to go individually to see the therapist. Because unless he can truly come to Jesus, come to terms with what he has done, make individual changes, we have no hope of making changes for ourselves as a couple and moving forward from this. So, I told his I see a must, then maybe reconcile after MC, but it's all in his, and his, hands. He has been crying, not eating, physically getting sick like I am, and I think he wants to be able to do what's needed, but his shame is so deep. He is meeting with our pastor today, and the therapist we are scheduled to see is licensed in mental health as well as pastoral counseling. 
I did that on purpose, even before this event, because I knew he was depressed. I knew he was spiritually dry and needed some strong guidance and uplifting from another Christian because he had lost his way even before this. So, I do know he is struggling, but unfortunately, unless I see from him what we all know are the signs of true change, repentance, willingness to be transparent, well nothing is moving forward. He and I have been apart since the day I found out. I took my kid and went to my mom's, then asked him to leave the next day. We have met two times and been in contact for me to get more details once I get information from OWH. We are very concerned about our five-year-old and her welfare, and that she doesn't get caught up in this. I am not going to penalize her just because he didn't think of her when he was thinking with his ex so, for right now, we are swapping out weekly. I am in our home with kid this week, and next he comes. He's crashing on someone's couch. So, mother-in-law is there at the current house. He told me he wanted me to stay in the house, he'll come for visits, he'll pick her up every day from school, he'll run her to gymnastics, etc. He didn't want me to have to move around either, we don't want our daughter to be shuffled. And he is crashing on a couch because his paychecks are going to continue to cover our home expenses, with nothing left over extra. But I told him honestly, I don't want to be stuck with mother-in-law for that long of time spans, and that my daughter is totally in love with her dad, and he should be there some too. So, that's what's going right now. So, I am not coddling. I think he's still in shock. Honestly, I think he may even do the wrong things. He's so deep, deep as his shame and inability to reconcile what he did. And I have seen the show before with other couples, the I'm going to kill myself threat. He's not doing that, he is just dead, vacant. The times I've talked to him he can't even get words out through his closed throat. It's like someone with laryngitis. But, he, still, cannot, even, believe, himself. This whole good, bad, saint, evil, sinner, perfect thing he is going on is something he's always struggled with. Like he splits himself, and it's not just about this event. That's why I know he needs IC before MC, but by then I think it will be just over. Sorry for him. Sorry for me. Sorry for my family. So not sorry for mother-in-law. She can take a hike and will be as soon as I can manage it. I pulled in the pastor for a consult. And I told my husband two stories. Ready kid us. Told him to imagine this, I'm on the floor, and he kicks me, hard. It hurts, yes. I'm wondering how could he do that to me, why would he do that? But I'm injured, not dead. I can get up. The wound can heal, even though it might take time. And I reach up to him, for his help in getting up. But instead of giving me his hand, he pulls out a knife and begins stabbing me with it. Now this is mortal. This is a killing blow, and the blood is running out fast. The blood of the soul of our family is fast running out, and he needs to act fast to stop the flow before I am dead. I told him that the first incident with the kicking is what he did with the affair. The second is what he is doing every time he tells me a lie, and I know them to be lies. He is killing the soul of this family. I told him another one, but it's longer and had a devil, God, sell the soul of your family theme, instead of killing the soul. Darn I'm good. It's also true, but it's good. One more thing. I just realized, knowing my husband and his total denial of ugly acts he couldn't possible have done. I mean, for real, having a hard time picturing all this going down, in the back seat of his Dodge Ram truck, with no tinted windows, at lunchtime, on a city, at a Walmart parking lot in a big city. It had to have been quick, and he usually can't come if there is distraction. Well, that's with me. All this excitement he's been feeling with sneaking around doing the forbidden may have helped things along. Update, yes, I still have my separate bank account, and yes, I still have my daughter's passport hidden, and yes, I am still having PTSD symptoms, but I also have hope. We are separated and trying to figure out how this can work. I do believe he wants to and is deeply ashamed of what amounted to about a two-month emotional affair, slid into kissing and stolen moments, culminating into this mess from last Saturday. He has been reading all the articles I've sent him, and the excerpts I've sent him a book which I found online, and even some explanations of her trauma recovery model I found in Spanish. The day he read that one, he came over here for a scheduled talk, and was almost incoherent, crying, flipping through the pages and saying, how did they know me? It's like they wrote this about me. What kind of monster am I? Pointing to certain lines and saying there. It's me right there. He has been willing to answer my questions, even the repetitive, obsessive ones. He has told our pastor and met with him twice. He has told his mother, his two younger brothers, and is buying into the addiction theory aspect of this dynamic. That is why he is willing to make sure he has internal as well as external accountability factors. And, get this, he is willing to choose one of our mutual friends from his workplace, one we agreed on, to tell everything to, so he knows that someone there knows and this person cares about him and us, so we'll keep him accountable. We both agreed and suggested the same person right off the bat. I hate to pull someone into this mess, but she is happily married, we've known her and her husband for a couple years, and she has the blunt yet empathetic personality of someone who will tell him and me if she sees red flags. In fact, she did see red flags, and mentioned to him half kidding once how his little thing with this other coworker was going. She is the only one that noticed lines were being crossed, but like me and like my husband, probably couldn't imagine him going so far. So, I have hope. 
We are so far from out of the woods, but at least we have a map and a compass. The only question is whether someone is going to want to give up and call in the rescue helicopter to give up before we've found our own way out of the woods together. Regarding his work, he can look but it doesn't mean he'll find anything. And I don't want to lose my house because he's out of a job. Neither of us has control over what she does, but I am willing to bet she is gone within a couple months. She is not originally from around here, and from what my husband and information from her own husband, it doesn't seem she is very connected to her kid or husband. She's likely to move out of town. In reading research and expert articles, there are situations where recovering cheaters make it work while still having to see or interact with the O. They work in different departments, so will rarely have direct interaction. He has described likely places and times he will be in contact with her. Today there is an all-staff meeting, which she will be at. This is why I needed some safeguards in place for my sanity. He is actually really buying into the theory of infidelity being like an addiction and is willing to build an external safeguards for accountability while working in individual counseling on his internal safeguards. So, in the meantime, we have identified a friend of the marriage. She is a married teacher at his school, whom we have known and been personal friends with her and her husband for years. I hate to pull her in, but I know she has high regard and respect for my husband and cares about us as well, and she can help identify any red flags. We are both meeting with her today at his school to explain everything and enlist her help. I think I will feel better knowing that he knows that someone at his school has eyes on him. I think he's sincere. He has been willing to read the research articles about recovery and is talking openly about how they reflect him and us and is taking seriously the steps outlined in the articles for recovery. We haven't used the word addiction when discussing this. He acknowledges with humility, which I've observed to this point no excuses, anger at himself, willingness to tell those who can be supportive spiritually and to our marriage, etc. The biggest change I noticed when he made the switch was, he stopped minimizing, making excuses, etc. When I say addiction aspect, acknowledging he was weak, he was wrong, and that until he is spiritually and morally stronger and the person he always thought he was, he may need external checks. Like giving me all his passwords, agreeing together who friends of the marriage are, agreeing he must identify two male confidants for extreme emergencies and to bounce things off of while still sharing those things with me. And if he doesn't have two male confidants, he will seek to cultivate more male friendships that we can both agree are friends to the marriage, etc. I said addiction because the experts liken the withdrawal period right after an affair ending like an addiction. They say grief and withdrawal of loss of good feelings, passion, is a hard time. Since I don't think he's a psychopath, I think these things are genuine. He has sobbed every time he sees a new symptoms of stress in our five-year-old. She is having nightmares of being left by her parents, of going somewhere else to live, having high anxiety, and is constantly reassuring us of her love, it's tearing us both up. That in and of itself would not make me consider reconciling if I didn't see these first steps in him. I know a continued dysfunctional dynamic would be more harmful to her than just doing a clean break. If I didn't think we could both work on this and be bigger and better than before, like it almost never was between us, my comment wanted to bring a different perspective on this Labor Day special. How do you guys like the ending? You think she should have left? I think her separating their account is a start to all of this. That was her final update, so things might have gotten better here moving forward. Will you forgive your husband? Or is it a one-way ticket to divorce? Comment down and I got more stories coming tomorrow.